So I'm not going back and forth with a man who thinks that they should be in my position. If you want to be in my position, get in my position. Do you believe that? Bluff City Media presents the Anthony Sane Show on YouTube at Bluff City Media. Stepping up to the microphone is your host, Anthony Sane. Acknowledge me. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Anthony Sane Show here at the Bluff City Media Studios. My man, Kenny Stubblefield, behind the glass. Kenny, what to do, my brother? Man, you need those headphones man, on, man. I do something right, man. Someone... I'm like, hold on, bro. It sounds kind of <laughs> kind of airy in this mug right now. <laughs> What's going on right now? Yeah, man. It sounds like, wait, I'm, I ain't hearing this shit. It's just like I'm talking at the house. But yeah. I'm over here momming over here trying to talk to you. Yeah, man. My boy, Kenny Stubblefield, behind the glass. We are here in the Bluff City Media Studios, man, uh, once again. Uh, Memphis weather is just crazy, man. It's like 60 something degrees outside. It was like six degrees a couple weeks, a week ago. You know what I mean? So, and then like in two days, it's going to be like 41. Yeah, it's nuts. It's it's nuts for sure. We're going to talk about that at the end of the show before the sit down with saying, uh, what type of weather do you like the best, Ken? Is what we're going to talk about. Shoot, I we, got you already. All right. We're going to talk about that, uh, in the, uh, in the show later on for this, uh, Inside the same brain. I didn't say sit down with Sane, right? Yeah, yeah. We got we got something better for Yeah, we got something better for sit down with Sane. My man Rob Fisher is going to jump in with me today. We're going to talk about, of course, some Grizzly stuff um, with him. Gigi Jackson. We're going to talk about Vince Williams. I'm going to tell you right now, man. Like, <laughs> I'm watching the game last night, right? God bless. What a game. And since the last time we talked, I'm watching the game last night. I'm like, all right, bro. Like, I expect this from Vince. I expect this from Gigi. You know, we've seen John Conchar kind of, you know, do his thing. I'm like, man, I'm not going to process <laughs> Scotty Pippen Jr. red ass. The next starting point. Right, guard, man. <laughs> Looking like Mike Conley Jr. out there, man. I'm like, all right, bro, what am I watching, man? I'm not talking about – he wasn't looking like rookie year, Mike. He was looking like – Fourth year. Year four, Fifth Mike, year. When, he, when he started figuring this shit out. I'm like, bro, what am I watching, He bro? looked like the year after they got rid of Kyle Lowry. That's right. what he looked like. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like no, nah, man. <laughs> Like I'm not I'm not processing Scotty Pippen Jr. Um, yet today, man. But um, like is, he, I said, is he the best backup point guard the Grizzlies have ever? Hey, no, nah, I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, man. Hey, man. My bad. My bad. Hey, my he bad. might be, bro. You, you want to talk about it? But uh, <laughs> big game for the Grizzlies last night, and it's like, but I'll talk to Rob about this as well, man. I'm talking about a game where Miami stars coming back. You know, Duncan Robinson hits the three. Uh, uh, Caleb Martin hits a three. You're that. You're up to like a, you know a minute or so to go, and Vince Williams knocks down the three that, on, that, that puts the game away. Off man. an assist, yeah, from Scotty from Scotty Jr. <laughs> <Pippen laughs> <Jr. laughs> My God, what, what about <laughs> what are we watching right <laughs> like, now? Like I can't. I'm still. I, I refuse to believe this. Like the Grizzlies went out and found a gem in Scotty Pippen Jr. in the G League. Like I, I just refuse to believe. It. I refuse to accept that, man. You know what I mean? And the only thing that I've really heard about Scotty Pippen Jr in the last couple of years is that him and the dude who was piping his mom was on the same team with him and uh, uh, the guy that's, uh, come on, man, the shooter that's in um, Milwaukee now. Which one? Uh, good God, man. On at Vanderbilt? No. Uh-uh. The grown dude in the league that, like, the shooter that... He, Beasley. Beasley. Like, him and Beasley were teammates last year. Were they really? That's the only thing I knew about Scottie Pippen Jr., that, huh. him, that he had to see... Malik Beasley. Uh, he had to see Malik Beasley. That's, that's all I knew about him. But um, crazy stuff, man. But the greatest big win last night against Miami and Kenny. I hate to bring this up again. So many people get so angry when I talk about this because they're just loving that draft pick that the Grizzlies have coming this year. And I'm going to say this, man. I don't give a damn about that draft pick. I want to see entertaining basketball. We talked to um, Keith Parrish about this as well, man. Like, this is fun, man. Like, I don't know what it's going to end up doing. I don't know if they're going to stay this way, but I really don't care because no, it doesn't matter. my guy G on Twitter, man, he was he hit me up about this. And I said, no, I, I don't agree with that. He was like, man, if the Grizzlies make the play in, it's just going to kill, you know, that draft pick or whatever. I'm Who like, cares? Oh, if the trade-off is G.G. Jackson knows how to win real games. Right. Vince Williams knows how to real, win real games. You get Marcus Smart at some point back in the season, and he really feels a part of this. He's like, man, I want to be a part of this, even if it means – I'm going to be like this super six man for this team, or I'm going to be this team's vet. These are going to be my guys. You know, I can fulfill what I couldn't get done with Jalen, uh, Jalen Brown. I mean, yeah, Jalen yeah. Brown, Jason Tatum. Right. If, if, if it means that type of stuff, you know what I mean? If you get Brandon Clark back and you start seeing him and Jaron probably being your starting front. If, if those type of things go out, come out of this, 
I don't care about some dude that you no. know we're picking that eight. Not, I mean, whatever. And I, I don't think there's. I'm not saying I think that's going to happen, but the numbers are what they are. You know what I mean? We since December 19th, we are a 58 percent. We're on a 58 percent win clip. I think we're like 11 and seven or something like that, right? If I'm not mistaken, no, we're 11 and eight. If we win this game against Orlando tonight, you'll be 12 and eight, which is guess what? 60 percent. That six, if you keep that sixty percent win clip up, you will finish the season forty one and forty one. And I know this sounds crazy now because you're ten games below five hundred. But guess what? If you, if you could keep this percentage up, this team is going to be forty one and forty one. Five hundred team. You're talking about a team that could very well be in the plan. Now, do I think this is going to happen? No. But I also didn't think that Chris Williams was going to turn into Memphis OG Ananobi. <laughs> I didn't know that was going to happen either. I didn't, that was not on my bingo card for the season. I did not know that um, Gigi Jackson was going to be looking like Paul George. You know, <laughs> none of those things. I definitely didn't know that Scottie Pippen Jr. was going to be Mike Conley Jr. I, right. I didn't know any of those three things. I didn't I didn't account for those things happening this year at all, man. So um, who knows? Who knows what what's in store? But I do know that these are entertaining basketball games we're watching. Um, I want to paint a picture for you real quick, though. Go ahead. You remember when uh, Paul George kind of made his entry into the NBA? Man, it was so cold. In Indiana, mm-hmm. right? You remember that series against the Heat? hmm When Indiana took them as far as they could mm-hmm. possibly go, and Paul George put it on LeBron. Right. Right? I'm, I'm going to paint a picture for you. All right. Play in. They go up against LeBron James. LeBron. G.G. Jackson. G.G. Jackson. Becomes G. George Jackson. G. George Jackson. <laughs> PG Jackson. PG Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> That's his entryway. <laughs> and next, next thing you know, we got our own Paul George over yeah. here, baby. MJG. MJGG. MJGG. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> It'll be fun stuff for sure, man. But it's super fun, man. It's super fun to go out on the road. Hopefully, I can pick up a win against Orlando tonight. Yeah. Going to be fun stuff at FedEx Forum tonight. Grizz is taking on Orlando. Orlando team, who's a lot better than people probably predicted them to be. Uh, your boy is, is is a load for them, man. Um, Paolo ben, ben Caro, ben Chero. Golly. It's been a we've, load for them. We've been watching him since high school. And yeah. that kid Cold. was never the top-ranked player in his, in his class, mm-hmm. but he was always the best. And he yeah. is awesome for yeah. Orlando. Uh, Franz Wagner been incredible there. Um, yeah, man, that, that Orlando team is, is really, really, really coming along for sure. But hopefully the Grizzlies can get another win. Keep that 60% winning pace going uh, to put them on pace to make it to the play-in. Like I said, man, I just want to see fun basketball. I don't care about any draft pick at this point, man. Just if 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 I if my trade-off for this season with all the mess that this season has been is that we found two dynamic wings that have been sitting on our bench yep. vibing, and then you end up, those are the two dudes. I don't care if they trade Zaire. I don't care if they trade Jake. I don't care what I don't care what they do going forward. If 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 all those two if you get those two guys going, everything is 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 worth it to me, man. Uh the disaster this season has been so far. But and I again, you, and again, ahead. I'll say this, man. Like I know people talk about that draft pick. If the Grizzlies get a draft pick in the first round, great. Whatever. If mm-hmm. they're in the lottery, whatever. That's great. But I look at this as But even if they make the play in, you still it still could in essence be it could be a lottery pick, right? No. Right. Because you wouldn't be in the playoffs. The play-in's not the playoffs, so you'd still be outside right. the picture mm-hmm. of the playoffs. But, but if they make the playoffs, they don't get a lottery ball, though, right? Right, right. Okay. Um, but I look at this as you've already established that Gigi mm-hmm. Jackson is that is going to be a rotational player for you next year. Mm-hmm. I look at him as the draft pick this year. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Because I know, I know they drafted him last year, but we've only gotten really six games out of him. And you realize this dude, and he sh- he's 19, youngest player in the league. Like, next year is going to be his year. And mm-hmm. I look at that, I go, okay, he's my lottery guy, man. Yep, but- for sure. I don't care, man. Like, I, And I've been the guy who's saying, uh, interesting stuff to think about, too, man. It's like, uh, shout out to Parker Fleming. He talked about this on Twitter. He was like, a lot of people are getting excited about, you know, trade that pick, whatever, right? And he was like, if you look throughout history, those even picks that have been, like, top three, top four, top five, don't yep. have as much... Leverage. Leverage as people think they have. You yep, know what I mean? Because right. if you think, man, <clears throat> a Grizzly-related trade, we got the 10th pick from New Orleans really for nothing. Like, we had 19, yeah. and we got up to 10, and basically it was a, a salary dump. Like, right. New Orleans was trying to get rid of Eric Bledsoe and Steven Adams' contract. So we were able to move up nine spots in the draft and get it to the top 10. 
basically for not a serious trade off. You know what I mean? So he was like, you know, you think about Portland was trying to move the second pick in the draft last year and couldn't move it. You know what I mean? So it's not really a given that you're going to be able to get anybody of substance uh, for that uh, number two pick. And like I said, man, my how I saw it a couple weeks ago has definitely changed. Because I look at Vince Williams, I look at Gigi Jackson, and it's undeniable, you know, what you're, what you're getting and what you're seeing out of those two guys for sure. Then you got little Mike Conley Jr., Come on, um, man. just sitting Dude. in the G League. If they got just sitting in the G League, I man. review. Okay, I'm gonna stop because he. Everybody's clamoring about getting Tyus Jones back. What if you got him now? Yeah, like and, what if he's here? I, he's not the you know the table setter like Tyus is, but he's. I think he's a probably. He's got more of a scorer's mentality than Tyus has because that dude. There was a bucket, man. There's a bucket last night. Dare I say an Andre Miller esque type player? You remember hey, Andre Miller? Man, man, hell yeah. Yeah, man, that's crazy, bro. If, if that dude pans out, now I've seen people jumping off the deep end. They was like, oh, he's gonna be the backup point guard next year. I was like, all right, that'll, that'll be Marcus Smart. Yeah, I think y'all, I think y'all just want Marcus Smart to just kind of just run around. I don't know what y'all want Marcus <laughs> Smart to do. Just coming <laughs> out the bench and just run around. What do y'all want him to be? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's not that's not happening. Scotty Pippen Jr. would not be, you know, your. You're not going to walk into camp with, with Scottie Pippen Jr. being your uh, your backup point guard, but if he if he keeps this going, and that's with, with what you saw last night is probably close to his ceiling. I think his floor is be more like a six to eight point game per game guy. A Kennedy, Either, a Kennedy Chandler. No, nah, I think he's, no, he's better than him. Well, what I'm saying is like that <laughs> kind of. I mean, Kennedy would come in and score some points. If yeah, he got yeah. minutes, but yeah, but um, if he's a guy who could just be your solid third point guard, it's a win. It's, it's a, a win, win for sure. Uh, but we'll see, man. We'll see how the whole thing goes, man. But we're about to take a break. My man, Rob Fisher, pop star, media pop star like myself. We're, we're our, our organization, man, is getting kind of slim. Like we might need to induct a new member today as well. We'll, see, well I'll talk to Rob, see if we can bring somebody else in to this group of pop media pop stars out here, man. But about to take a break. Rob Fisher is going to join us for the Sit Down with Sane. We'll see you guys in a minute. I mean, largely the reason my concern meter is so high is because of what Penny Hardaway has been saying. Um, but if you just sort of put the losses in a vacuum, they're still 15 and four. Like they still have a lot out in front of them uh, and they can write the ship. But when you hear what Penny's talking about, it becomes a little more, a lot more concerning because he's talking about chemistry. He is the only coach I've ever heard in any sport that has said, I have to avoid playing certain guys on the floor because they have personality clashes. I can get by with the losses. They could start winning here soon, get back to their winning ways. We've seen it. We've seen what this team can do. But what Penny's saying, I think, has staying power, and that is scary. It becomes concerning, especially when you have a team that is so good. Like, th this team is so good and so talented, and there's so much in front of them. They've been so successful this year. But then you, this is worrying. Tune into On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. We are currently going the wrong direction. The good news is Penny continues to say that we haven't even scratched the surface of how good we could be. Which Let's I'm start like, scratching that surface, please. All right, so what do we need to do to fix the Tigers? Playing defense seems like it's a pretty good place to start, honestly, right? I mean, guarding the three line, maybe not switching, not, I guess, always switch, but it's the the, the overhelping on defense. I think that's been the biggest issue, and we've talked about it for four episodes now, and nothing has changed. I think outside defensively, I mean, the main thing is what we talked about in the first segment. Like, you got to find a guy or two. Maybe it's JQ and Malco, but you got to find two, a vocal leader or two that steps up to replace what Caleb Mills was bringing. Like, mm -hmm. you got to have somebody internally at the team level that's doing that kind of stuff. It can't just be on the staff. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel.
All right, y'all, welcome back to the Anthony Sane Show. We got my man, Rob Fisher, man, a uh, guy I met a few years ago doing this radio thing over at uh, Flynn Broadcasting back in the day. My guy was was coming on as a regular guest over there. One of the guys I really look up to, man, he he the one who put me on this pop star shit, man. It reminded me that, <laughs> you know, I ain't no media member, man. I it's, ain't, a, ain't. An ex, it's an exclusive group. Yeah, it's an exclusive group, man. It's not many of us left in the city no. either, man. It's, it's like me, you... The rest of these dudes are a bunch of media members, man. It ain't yeah. nobody really on what we on, man, if you really think about it. There aren't many. I mean, uh... Devin Walker is. No, Devin's kind of, like, at the game, like, like all the, you know... He's like, close, though. Like, he you ain't going no yeah, so to uh... see me in no Tiger football game talking about go get some coverage of Memphis versus UTSA. Yeah, like, he does get a lot of coverage. Yeah, that he ain't is kind of media. media. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true, that's true. We yeah, just show real. up at Memphis games. Yeah, he's he's a, show up. Yeah, he's a local celebrity for sure, but he's still kind of a <laughs> kind of a worker when it comes to I'll talk to <laughs> him about a it. We'll, we'll try <laughs> to get, get him it. over to yeah. this side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but it's, just, it's like it's just me and you at this point, man. There, there were a few of the Kevin Cerritos of the world, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, Cerritos kind of got... And who was it? He used to join you on the radio, female... TV. Oh, uh, uh, Samaria Terry. And we put her in. The oh, hell star. yeah. She's yeah. definitely a pop star. Yeah. You seen, you seen her page? She's like a whole influencer. <laughs> like, she, she's, she's went to a whole other level. Oh, don't man, be so real. quick. I'm a kind of an influencer hey, myself. Yeah, you know, I, I get free that. pretzels, unique yeah. brand pretzels, unique snacks.com. Check hey. them out. Shout out, unique brand. Uh, hey, if y'all need a podcast sponsor too, we got you, unique. That's right. You. Dead Soxy. Uh, okay. I get free socks from Dead Soxy. They're a wonderful okay. company. Somebody uh, hit you up and Gabe does his sock fundraiser for his school. I need Champ to be... Boxers. Have you okay. seen yeah. Champ Boxers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, wonderful company. And uh, also at Eastwick Barbershop. Shout out. That's what I'm talking about, man. My boy Rob Fisher, there. man. Yeah. Pop star Influence. shit, man. Pop star shit, man. We ain't no goddamn media members, man. You know what I'm talking about. Stop playing with me, man. But no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But guy Rob is in the building, man. It is back fun being a Grizzlies guy again, man. Like, we, we talked to Brevin Knight about this. When John Morant came back, there was a boost of enthusiasm in the city. Then we lose John. It's like, we're like, oh, man, it's about to suck. As a person who throws watch parties, I was like, oh, man, this is about to freaking this right. about to be ass. Who's going to come to but, that? Yeah, right. But <laughs> um, a Grizz watch party. We'll also be watching. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> the Bachelor episode <laughs> season three. We'll also right. be, <laughs> be, yeah, you got to be creative with it or whatever. But yeah, man, but it is back fun again, man. This, uh, uh, this wild bunch of bad news bears we have now in this team, man, led by, of all people, uh, Vince Williams <laughs> and Gigi Jackson. And of course, Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, wild game of the night against Miami. Miami, a team who definitely had stuff to play for the other night. You know, yeah. they, they lost four straight games. Traded Kyle Lowry, went out and got uh, Rozier. And you would think that they were that they were trying to win that game. Yeah, they got the game close at the end. And Rob Fisher, I told you that a, a game, it's going to be a game in January where the Grizzlies had to leave pretty much the whole game against the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat, uh, when they traded for a guy that's a you know dynamic scorer, you know what I mean? They're, they're trying to gain standings in the East. Uh, the Heat start, they're gonna start coming back on the Grizzlies, and Vince Williams is gonna hit the backbreaker to, to seal his 25 points on the game and to give the Grizzlies a win. I'd first say, What? Who? <laughs> like, oh, that old Vince Williams. Oh, the guy, yeah, that dude. <laughs> um, you would not believe me, right? And Scotty Pippen's gonna, yeah, have a and good Scotty game. Pippen's kid is gonna be who? <laughs> Scotty Pippen. <laughs> Um, no, you'd, you'd never believe it. And, 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 and it's truly one of the great things about this season uh-huh. in a, in a season that's been such a roller coaster and, and such a tough ride. Um, the Vince Williams jr. Story. I mean, bro, best story. He, he yeah. is, you know, for the last couple of years, it's been a position on this team you know, it, after DeAnthony Melton left and, and, mm. and you lost your depth, there, there was an opening for someone to grab that position yeah, and, yeah. and take it, you know, take the bull by the horns. <clears throat> and no one did. No one did, despite being given every <coughs> opportunity. There, there were there were glimpses mm. of, of a guy that could do it, but, but never consistently. And uh, for him to do it consistently <coughs> night in and night out mm. on both ends of the floor, you know, and, and Brevin and I talked about it, you know, when you have a lineup like the Grizzlies are playing with right now, you're, you're going to score a hundred points. People are going to score. Mm-hmm. I mean, guys, guys have to get points. You're going to score a right. hundred. Um, and, and I asked Brevin, why is Vince not that guy? You know, why, mm-hmm. why is this real? And, uh, and his answer was great. It's, it's because he did it with 
the regulars. Mm -hmm. Well, when we had most of the regulars, right, right. he did it with them too. He, he wasn't scoring 17 or 24 a night, but he was getting 10, 12, right. but he was still getting six rebounds. He was still getting two steals. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, he makes his, his bread is buttered on the defensive end yeah. for sure. Um, but then when he does so offensively is so confidently that you, you kind of rely on him. And, and right now with the Grizzlies in the situation that they're in, uh, it's, it's, it's great to be able to rely on him to be consistent yeah. night in and night out on both ends of the floor. He's, he's been so much fun to watch. I, I, <clears throat> I kind of, I like to call him the Joker because he's got that smile, but it's, yeah. an, it's an evil smile, man. Yeah, he looks like a nutcase <laughs> for real. The way he, you see when people Photoshop like these really fake smiles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It's wild stuff with Vince. Uh, one of the low points of the season was, um, Houston, Houston came to town, right? And it's uh, Dylan Brooks first game back. We lose to uh, Houston. And it was a Dylan night. Dylan has a great game, knocks down a dagger. And you're looking at, you know, Jake LaRavia, uh, you know, Zaire. You're looking at these guys. You're like, good God, man. Like, this dude goes to another team and he's good. That's one of the low points of the season where Dylan has his comeback game. He wins. He He's the hero of that game for Houston. Yeah. And he's mouthing off. He's saying what he has to say. He's in the locker room. And you got all the media guys, including myself, got a mic to his mouth. He's just, you know. Yeah, man, my feelings were hurt. <laughs> all these different things were done. Like, so it's like, all right, man, this is a pretty a low point. And then you see Vince Williams, who comes in, looking like all we begged Dylan Brooks to be when he was here, and mm -hmm. even more, man. He's a guy who he's not looking for his own sign. He's after he got his paycheck, it looks like he took his game to another level. Right. You know what I mean? He knocks down shots. He keeps the ball moving. He can make plays. He's not trying to get his own stuff. He doesn't feel like he has to be part of the big four or anything. He just goes out there and works. How how good is that feel to see a guy who, and I'll say this, man, when Brevin was on here uh, a few weeks ago, I, was, I wasn't really on the side of Vince Williams can be your starting small forward. But I sit here today, man, I'm like, why in the hell couldn't he be? You know what I mean? Like he's he's showing you right. all those type of things. So oh. how do you feel about that going forward? I, well, I think at, at least – at the least, he has proven to be a very formidable rotation guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to get at minimum 24, 25 minutes, right. um, whether that's coming off the bench or not. Do do I envision him as a starter? I didn't. And Brevin and I had the same conversation. Mm -hmm. I didn't only because you brought Marcus Smart in. Right. And whether it's best for the team or not, you brought Marcus Smart, Smart in. in. And you gave up a lot to get him. And, and gave up a lot to get him. Mm -hmm. And he's a guy that starts. So Everywhere he's been. Like he's, he's Jason got, Tatum and Jalen Brown didn't sit him down. <laughs> no. So, so you're going to play Ja, Dez, and, and Marcus. I right. mean, that, that's that's going to be your three at, at the top of the rotation. Mm -hmm. And Brevin asked the question, well, why not, why not Vince? Now, now, granted, maybe in the grand scheme of things, it's better for the team if, if Vince starts and Marcus comes off the bench. Mm -hmm. That that might be the case. I just didn't think it was the case at that time. Uh, I I didn't think that would happen. But I mean, Vince Vince gives you something that you lost with Dylan, and mm -hmm. the biggest thing you lost with Dylan was the size at that position. This you know when we talked about Marcus Smart playing that position, we're like, well, what if it's a big guy? Right. You know, what are we going to do? Well, now you have Vince, who is has that size, and mm -hmm. and he can do that defensively, um, and and then offensively, he doesn't hurt you at all. He helps right. more than anything. So, can he be a starter in the future? I, I I wouldn't throw it out. I mean, the bottom line is, you know, going into next season, whether okay, now Marcus Smart's been here a year, and and obviously it'd be his position mm -hmm. if if you're going to, if you'd make that sort of change. You're going to go into next year healthy, you assume, mm -hmm. you hope, uh, going into the season as we are a contender. So you've got to do what's best for the team, period. Mm -hmm. And if that's Marcus Smart coming off the bench, uh, which I think would be a great asset to your bench, uh, and Vince Williams starts, which I have no problem with that happening. Um, or if Marcus starts, I got no problem with that. And Vince yeah. comes off your bench. He's still going to get the minutes. He might still be in there late in games and to close games mm -hmm. out. And, and, you know, he, you could slide him to the four if Jaron's over at the five. I mean, so there are a lot of things you could work with. He bottom line is he has earned minutes going forward right. <clears throat> as a guy who is a rotation guy, who is a part of this team, who is, you know, one of your top six players uh healthy or not and uh man and crazy. i'm excited about that it is so that crazy. he's done that man I, yeah. it, it, it's been so much fun to watch because he's <clears throat> he's such a pest defensively and you know taylor jenkins always you know preaches moving on to the next play mm -hmm. i mean he guards 
he when he just first started playing, he was guarding some of the best players in the league, right. Durant, Doncic. Luka, I mean, yep. back to back, and you know they'd score thirty, but it was hell on them to score thirty. Yeah. And even when he got beat, he it didn't phase him. It didn't affect him. He moved on to the next play. He's great at mm-hmm. moving on and, and and just taking each possession at a time. And he's been uh, he's been fun to watch. It's been a revelation for yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure, man. Another guy who's definitely been super exciting. A uh, little bit more flash uh, to this young man. A little bit more, more wiggle to his bag and highlight type plays is uh, Gigi Jackson. Um, we've you've been here as long as I have, as far as you know, being around this team as a fan or covering the team, or whatever. And we've seen Rudy Gay come through here. We traded Rudy Gay. And it seems like we've been chasing Rudy this, Gay for a long time. Rudy Gay. You know, we ran off Rudy Gay. <laughs> we've been trying to bring in another Rudy Gay yeah. forever. And then you get this kid who's 19 years old, youngest player in the NBA, and you're like. Yeah, if Rudy, if that's who Rudy Gay was, we probably would have been fine. Like, cause you see, it's like it's, I hear people talk sometimes, and they're like, I'm talking about Gigi Jackson, of course. But sometimes people be like, Well, it's only been two games or whatever. And with some guys, it takes, you know, half a season to really see what they are. Right. But with some guys, you see just a little bit. It's like, I've seen enough to know that kid can play basketball. Cause it goes back to the arguments that I used to have with people when John Moran first got here. The first time I saw that kid pick up a, a ball in a preseason game, I was like, that's the best Grizzly that's ever, put his, that's ever had a ball in his hand on the right. court is that kid I just saw. And there were people, no, it ain't time, man. It ain't time, man. You ain't seen enough. And Mike Collin was good as hell. You crazy? Like, no, that I guarantee you. <laughs> that little dude with the little <laughs> short different. dreads in his head, that's the best player we've ever had here, yeah. ever. And I see that in Gigi, man. I'm like, I'm not saying he's like, you know, the best player we've ever had. But you can look at him and tell that's a special player. Like, that's not just... Some kid who just got hot, you know, in a game, he's knocking down shots. You can look at him and tell he's a special player. What do you think when you see Gigi Jackson? What is he? Are we talking about next year? He's like a high level rotation player. Maybe he's a guy that, that may be your starting small forward. Or do you see a guy who, you know, he's probably a, a ways from there? What do you see him being in the next, you know, 24 months? Or whatever? I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle because I wouldn't mm-hmm. say it's a ways, but but I don't know if it's next year yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's 19 years yeah. old, which is incredible. Um, and this time last year, he was on some wild shit. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No yeah, kidding. yeah. Uh-huh. So, I mean, I, I think just from the short time we've seen him, and really he's played, what, six games? Uh, I mean, about six games. Yeah. Real, true mm-hmm. minutes. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, six games. And and he's been good, I think, um, for four of them. Mm-hmm. You know, and and – not terrible in one of them and, and one of them he, they i mean they 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 went away from him against minnesota mm-hmm. and just kind of said all right well this isn't the right match right. Mm-hmm. we'll we'll give you but that's expected right. at, at this point i'm really excited to see him the rest of the year and if things continue to go the way they are for the grizzlies you know he's going to get opportunities to play and play a lot of minutes mm-hmm. um if, if even when guys come back i think he's also shown like vince williams has uh, not to the extent I think of Vince Williams, but right. he has shown that he deserves minutes as well to see what you have, because I think you have, you know, one of my favorite hockey lines when I used to cover hockey came from one of the blues coaches. And he, he, uh, he said, he's got all the tools in the toolbox or he's got all the tools, but no toolbox to store. Them. Mm. So, you know, how's this toolbox? Is, is it, can can he can he pick up the game can he have a <coughs> desire that drive to win mm-hmm. that drive to be great that because he's got all the tools i think we've seen that i mean his athleticism his touch his his activity has been great you know the minnesota game he wasn't good that was after the 220 point games mm-hmm. and and let's not sneeze at 220 point games that's right. that that's impressive right. in, in itself um, I mean, the names of guys who have done it at that age are, was incredible just to see that alone. That never sounded wild, too. It just seems like there were more like... You would think, year, yeah, because yeah. of all the guys that came out and, Back in after the one, high school. The one done, yeah. yeah. Um, but he, uh, in, you know, didn't play well against Minnesota. Chicago, nobody really played well. He was okay, but n- everybody was okay at best. Mm. And then he came back, and, and to me, it was the, the most impressive thing I've seen in his first six games. The two 20-point games were great, mm. real impressive. But what he did against Toronto was he was very active. He didn't have to score. He he made a huge impact in that game without scoring. Mm-hmm. And to me, that was big because as we were talking about before the show, the lineup that you have right now, 100 points are going to be scored. Somebody scored. Yeah, somebody I mean, score. somebody's going to get them. I mean, if Jacob Gilliard gets 20, we shouldn't be like, oh, my God, Jacob Gilliard. <laughs> somebody's going to score. You know, so uh, those points are out there. 
So, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of worried like, all right, is he just getting points that are out there or is he really, you know, getting them? So for him to have a game where he made a huge impact without scoring, I thought was really big uh, to see in his first five games. And then he came back uh, against Miami and had a nice scoring night and, and did well on the boards again, uh, played smart. And, and I like when he makes mistakes, he's the first one and quickly realizes it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't like guys who are always my bad, but he's not a my bad guy all the time. When mm -hmm. he makes a mistake, he'll look over at coach, he'll put a big smile on his face and be like, that was my bad. Mm -hmm. that, I, I know what I did. Right. And then he comes back and he doesn't do it. The, the great example was against Golden State. Kaminga pumped him one time yeah. and he got called with foul as an end yep. one. Mm -hmm. He quickly pumped him the rest of the night and he never again. did it again. Mm -hmm. I mean, th that that was impressive. So he's been really impressive. I'm I'm excited to see what's happens the rest of the season. But you know, again, he's a guy I think that when you look at the rotation, you look at the depth of this team, he's moved up. He, you know, if, if this team were totally healthy, he's moved up in that top 10, yeah, I think. Which is nuts. And it was a guy saying that, uh, like, is a guy on Twitter. <clears throat> he says, GG and Vince have, like, moved themselves into, like, the top six conversation. I was like, oh, slow down. That was like, shit, man. Like, he really, <laughs> like, he really ain't lying, though. Like, I mean, if you really slow down and think about it, you got Josh Jaren, uh, Josh Aaron, Dez, of course. Marcus Smart is up there. Are you doing... Vince, if you're talking about, are we talking, Stephen? Yeah, I guess. But okay. then you gotta go, Vince, right? Maybe you Kennard. Tell, you tell me he might be starting, right? Yeah. So you gotta say he's. Yeah, I mean, it would just depend on your rotation. Could right. be Kennard coming in, you know, and and Dez takes an early break so he could come out and run the point. I, I don't know, but but but, but, but they, he's they, there. Those dudes, those two dudes could be up there next year. They yeah. could be in your eight man rotation. Yeah, like absolutely, sure. your top eight guys for sure. Now, we've talked about surprises so far, guys like Vince, guys like Gigi Jackson. Now, I'm not going to do this with Scottie Pippen. Scottie Pippen, go to hell. Like, I'm not – I saw freaking Mike Conley Jr. out there last night. I'm like, all right, man, I'm not – no, I'm not believing that, bro. I've seen too many dudes coming on either two ways or, or, or 10 day contracts, though. I like, I'm like, all right. I don't, I don't have the – I don't, I can't, I can't fun, deal. Though. Yeah, fun. but I can't deal good. with Scottie Pippen Jr. today, man. I'm like <laughs> – but like part of me is like I just saw Mike Conley. <laughs> like we got a guy. Like we, we got, got a guy. We would have found Mike Conley sitting at the house. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, bro. I was like, so I'm like, all right, I'm not screwing around with you right. today. Uh so we're gonna we're gonna pause on Scotty Pippen Jr. Yeah. We'll come back maybe in a few weeks or so. Maybe we'll, yeah, maybe see, and see if he's still having like 13 and 8 or whatever. Right. We'll see if he's like and closing the game in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Man, hitting guys in the corner like, all right, man. Dude was like, dude was like, fourth year of my college junior out there. So I'm like, no, I'm not. I can't deal with you today. We just go deal with you later on. We'll see. <laughs> I, I, I refuse to get excited about Scottie Pippen Jr. But the Zipping Pippen T-shirt will be available very soon. If not now, <laughs> that's, that's part of our pregame show tomorrow tonight. Is the Zipping Pippen? <laughs> oh yeah, it's coming. Y'all doing it for real? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. That shirt gonna be here in the morning. By the time you watch this episode, <laughs> that show will already be out. Uh, <laughs> but no, man, we gonna move on. Um, it's definitely something to be excited about, man. Something I talked to Kenny about in the first segment of the show is uh, people get all riled up. Is this stat? I just keep pulling it out. If, if people who like want to say this horrible draft pick, they get mad and be like, "Say you're you're ruining the mojo." And that stat is, I said this when John first got here, right? I said, in order for us to get, because Jaron was like, our goal was to be 41 and 41. Let's, I mean, let's get to 500, right? Mm -hmm. I said, it might take a slow walk, but if the Grizzlies win 60% of their games from December 19th when John Morant came back to the end of the season, you will you will finish the season at 41 and 41. Right. And that if you break that down in the, in the pieces, in the digestible segments. What do you do, winning, five games? Yeah, five. That There's yeah. three out of every five games. If they win against Orlando tomorrow, they are still on pace. With all this stuff that has happened since December 19th when John Morant came back, if they win against Orlando tonight or tomorrow, whatever you guys are watching this, you're at 60%. <laughs> Man, I, 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 I made a promise weeks ago that I wouldn't look at the standings hey. until the Grizzlies got to 500, which it may be the, the very last game of the season. It might be very difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brevin showed me the standings last night while we were on the plane. We are not too far and away. And I got disappointed him. in him for showing me because I went, huh, <laughs> I haven't interesting. Looked at I'm, just, I'm just looking. I've got, I got tunnel vision, man. I'm looking at this like, all right, five games set. We're two and two. That's a great way to look Orlando, at it. Orlando, we get this one. We're three and two. We won that set again. And yeah. we're 60%. Yeah. No, I think that's a Where great way to look at it. Where are we in the standings? You know, Huey used to do, I think, 10 game sets. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, five game sets are good because yeah, I mean you'd like a four and one here and there, yeah. and because you're going to have four a one and four yeah. here and there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it's where are we in the standings? Though? Do you remember? I think we're only four back of Golden State of ten. A Golden State team that looked ass a few weeks ago when we yeah. beat them. So and the team, you know, and, and you know the team above them It's uh, Houston, right? Utah. Oh yeah, we about hey, bro. Here come the Grizzlies. Hey. And then you got Desmond Bain probably coming back because he's not going to sit out for the rest of the year. I would hope not. That dude's going to try to come back, bro. Yeah, he's in tennis shoes. He's yeah. he's doing stuff. You, so in essence, he did Jaren's little jump rope thing yeah. that they do. In uh, essence, you can have everybody but Steven Adams and job back in like a month. True. Uh, the thing I, the thing I, when, when I looked at Brevin and said that about the standings, I was like, oh, interesting. Okay. It's and crazy I started think thinking, about, what's abs- the most amazing stat this season for the Grizzlies is that they're 13 and 12 on the road, which is nuts. I mean, they were 16 and 25 last year and were the second seed in the West. Yep. They're 13 and 12 on the road. I'll, I'll, I'll say what, I, what I've said for a long time. They got, they got to start winning at home, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, you know, I, I think for this team, it's, it t- it takes a lot to win a game. I mean, it takes it takes what we've seen in these last couple of games. It takes everybody working. It takes the ball moving so well, and it takes shots falling down. And mm. you know, but they work hard enough to give themselves a chance to win. And <clears throat> and I think it also helps that teams, especially when they're on their home floor, when they take mm-hmm. on the Grizzlies, they say, "Oh, they got nobody." It's human nature to yeah. think, "Oh, they got nobody playing tonight." I mean. John Conchar is their point guard, right. and uh, they got David Roddy starting, and uh, I mean Jaron starting at center, and and who else? Vince Williams. Who are these people? Right. So you under we've been in that situation the yeah. last couple of years and as a two seed, us, thinking yeah. don't let this team, don't overlook this team, mm-hmm. you know, and and so I think human nature wise, we could get overlooked a little bit, mm-hmm. not as much on the road because teams are a little more dialed in on the road, right? But we just got to be better at home, and you know I. If if the team was full strength, I would be up in arms about it, wondering mm-hmm. why aren't they better at home? What's right. going on? But but because of the situation they're in, it's like every win they get, they earn. They earn. Mm-hmm. They have to work so hard to get every win that they get, and it's great every win that they get. Um, you just hope they start happening at home. I mean, they, they've yeah. had some tough games at home, but you know the record. You're like, God, how can we do it on the road as well as we're doing, but not yeah. at home? Um, so hopefully that'll turn around. You, you turn around the home record. You, you know, I was thinking about it today. What are, what are they? 10 games under 500? 10. There's 17 and 27. 27, I think. You know, if you can play, if you can play 500 on the road, which is great. Well, that's not a lot to play better at home Yeah, where you should play better. So it's nuts that we're talking about. This team could make the play in though. After all the crap they've been to. It would take. <laughs> It would take the entire – it might be like the final game of the season determines everything type situation, but they can get in, man, which is nuts. I, I think your goal – you really, your goal is the games in March matter. Mm-hmm. You know, and it might be a long shot come March, yeah. but they, it still could it matter. Could be very fun you know, and guys March. could be back. Yeah. So it could it could be a lot of fun. So, yeah, if games in March matter, I think it would be a, a great success yeah. for yeah. this season because it, it it's a few times has felt like it's yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and 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 they just they keep fighting so yeah. cre- credit to them i uh one of the guys that could be coming back is brandon clark he's mm-hmm. been rumored to i think he said his goal is to be back by the all-star break i don't know how real that is um but we've seen him doing a little bit more you know we saw him kind of struggling to dunk in the first video then mm-hmm. he was dunking a little better and now he's shooting jump shots and you know, we're watching how he's playing his feet and all you know we're, we're looking at all these things with bc but I don't, i'm not sure what version of brandon clark you get back next year of course, you'll have him back uh, this year. I mean, but you, of course, you'll have him back next year, and you'll see whatever version of him you you put out there. We talk about Jaron if he's a five, he's a four. If he can do the what, what he can do, all these type of things in the future. Is we talk about Jaron can't be a five, all right? But if healthy Brandon Clark is your four, which is the thing that everyone assumed was going to happen the year that we had that rookie year with Ja. Jaron and BC when they were both in the rookie all-star game, or whatever right. this freshman, sophomore, whatever they call it, rookie sophomore game, whatever. Could that be a front court going forward that actually works with the Jaron's the four or the five in that scenario? 
if BC is, you know, the same guy we saw. I'll you know, say this about him. Brandon. After after his workouts before every game, mm-hmm. there's no one happier than the, Brandon Clark. Oh, then Brandon Clark. Okay. When he comes off the floor, he is he's just so excited that he's able mm-hmm. to do it again. Right. You know, <laughs> and 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 the dunks are great and and the shots are great. And he's he looks like he's getting fit, and you can just tell he's just itching yeah. to get back and can't wait to get back. Um I don't know, man. I, I don't I don't know because you look at past history, he hasn't been good as a starter. Yeah. You know, he's always been more effective coming off the bench. He's, he's always, always had started, that synergy. He's always started for Jaron, though. He never started with Jaron. We've always that's thought true. that's the future. Like the, the That's true, yeah. but but it's Jaron a five. But could he but but could he be could Jaron be the taller player who's still being playing power forward if Brandon Clark is in essence your center? If could could Brandon Clark allow Jaron to still roam a little bit defensively? He kind of does the dirty work. Probably yeah. guard the stronger guy, even though the guy, the stronger guy might be taller than him. Could yeah. he be that guy to kind of make Jaron's job? Basically what we're asking Tillman to do, but it's Brandon Clark instead. Maybe. I, yeah, by position, Jaron yeah. center, Brandon the four. Or however um, you want to put it on But you paper. can rotate him. Uh, Just like know, Marcus Smart is not a small up. forward. But, yeah, yeah, right. Um, I don't know. I, I, I've, I've always felt like Brandon... At his best has been what he's been, Mm -hmm. which is a guy that comes off the The bench bench, and gives you a pop. Mm -hmm. It just gives you that bounce, gives you energy. The floater. The floater. And, you know, he's the recipient. And and Tyus was so good for him, you know, Mm -hmm. as far as lobs are concerned. um, That when he's been out of that position, he has struggled. He, Mm -hmm. He just has. So, so I just have always kind of looked at that. Now, I don't know, an off season, uh a new Brandon Clark, um, yeah. a full preseason, maybe that's maybe that's something that they would experiment with. That that could be experimented with. I mean, you hope on Brandon's trajectory that he'd be a, a more integral role mm-hmm. going forward anyway. Yeah. Now I don't know if that means starting or a more integral role on the bench, but um but I don't know. I, I I haven't I haven't really thought about it. Yeah. Um, so it's an it's an interesting question question and it's just an emotional question I have because I just have so because much. Because you remember from Yeah, <clears throat> when they were the three kids were, I did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and uh <clears throat> and we know what John and, and Jaron have become. I mean, the, yeah. the, they're they're set in, in their position. I don't know. I, I think I, I'd like I I I wouldn't mind seeing it. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing it. Yeah. I'll, I'll put it that way. Yeah, for sure. Uh, final question for you, Rob. Uh, this is something that happened yesterday, and I said, well, I got Rob on with me today. Let me see what he thinks about this. I know that you are a big-time advocate for mental health and things like that, mm-hmm. and you've openly expressed you know, some of your battles you've had to deal with. So I said, let me let me see what uh, Rob thinks, because he might say, let me just tell him I'm butt-ass wrong, and I'm fine <laughs> with that as being the answer. You know what I mean? Uh, but, like, because um, I, I had – I had um, – Doc Holiday on here about a few weeks ago, too. And we were talking about, he was talking about he doesn't really criticize, like, people and use words like losing their job. He Mm -hmm. doesn't do anything to make you think that that guy shouldn't be here because he understands the influence that he has, right? And somebody, it was like a thread where people were talking about Zaire. And people were saying, oh, I feel sorry for him and I feel so bad for him. And I'm driving here to the studio tonight and I hear uh, Gabe Coon him and uh, Cutter Dunn, and they're talking about this. And they're like, oh, I feel sorry for Zaire. I'm like, man, this Zaire stuff, I'm just glad I'm at the point where it doesn't make me mad anymore. Like, I'm, it's like entertaining to see Zaire be kind of bad right now. Especially, <laughs> I'm like, all right, but it was kind of funny, like how terrible Zaire is, just because I got Gigi and Vince in my back pocket, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I don't care. Like, all right, dude, whatever. Because in a while, you're either gonna, not going to be here or you'll be like the biggest Six eight cheerleader in the world, <laughs> like like that's that's probably what you're gonna be, man. Like I don't really care because at that point we won't need you to be anything because we got a bunch of guys coming back next year. Right. But I said all that to say, uh, people were like, man, it's just you know people are hard on him and we shouldn't be so hard. Like you know you don't know what he's going through mentally and all that. And my immediate response was, it's not it's not a fan nor a media member's job to protect Zaire Williams or any other player's mental space, like. I think that's something that they have to be responsible for on their own. Now, do I am I saying go like tag Zaire Williams in a tweet and say, hey, Zaire Williams, you suck. I think that's dumb. I think right. that's crossing a boundary. But if you're just publicly saying something in a, in a public forum, I don't think they're 
I don't, I'm not gonna say there aren't any limits, but as long as you're basically talking about basketball or like what he's doing on the court, I don't think there should be, I don't think there's something that you should police. Like I, I don't think it's media or <clears throat> fans' responsibility to protect him. I think he just has to know when to log off, man. Cause I have my own things that I do to protect my middle space from stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Like whether it's blocking people or putting my phone down or going to do something else. I don't, if I don't, if I, if it gets to be too much, too much for me, I'm going to put it down. You right. know what I mean? So where, where are you at on it? Like, what do you think about it? Well, I think, I think prof professional athletes mm -hmm. and coaches for that matter are, and I'm okay with you telling me that you disagree with me. No, well, I, I so. think they're fair for criticism. Yeah. I mean, they get it from fans in the stands. Yeah. Um, See, I think that can go too far. Like if I'm, the stuff I think that it I can say, get too far when yeah. people get personal. Yeah. And like you said, if you if you're personally sending it to <laughs> say him, yeah. saying, "Hey, dude," um, or that, saying that's probably it, a little if I'm too in his far. Face but, saying, like, "Oh man, you're effing trash at a game," I think that's goofy. But yeah. like, but I, but I I think they're open to criticism, however they're playing, um, coaches and and players. You know, I mean, I, I've always had the mindset of I I've never I've never fired anyone who has a job mm -hmm. because they had the job. I'll, I'll talk about them as much as I want after right. they're fired or after they're like, mm -hmm. Oh, but in, until a coach is fired, I never wanted to fire people. Um, it's, and when I worked in radio, I mean, if, if you were critical of athletes and it just, it just happens. And, 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 and it's, and it's, it's funny that, that people then would bring up, well, his mental well being, Yeah. And I, I, I don't see anything that, I, I don't know, but I don't see anything in Zaire Williams that, that I, I think he's crap. got some yeah. mental problems. Yeah, I mean, and, and frankly, it's none of my business. Yeah. Um, and, and and I shouldn't have to be responsible for it when I'm commenting on Twitter or mm -hmm. commenting on a radio show or or whatever. Um, so so yeah, I don't I don't I I don't I don't, I don't think there's a care that needs to be had for coddling people. Mm -hmm. You know, my situation is a little different. I work with these guys, yeah, and 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 I'm friendly with a lot of these guys. So, so I mean, I care for their well being. I, yeah. I I I do feel sorry for Zaire because I know he's going through a really rough time playing mm -hmm. right now, and that's got to be awful when you see guys who are in front of him in the rotation who are playing really well. One's mm -hmm. 19 years old, right. and, and another guy who just came on the scene, uh, who is <laughs> when, when who we're you. talking about whether he should start or right. not. When we, 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 we talk about Zaire, we're talking about, hey, you got to give him three years. Like, I yeah. do three games. And he's so, I mean, and, he, and, he's, and he's struggling right now more than he has. And mm -hmm. you can see it in his face and, and you see it. But, you know, and, I, and so I, I feel bad for him for that. But but I, I would never I would never say, well, we need to think about his well-being. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that He's far. He's got to think about his well-being. You know, too, you know too often we use mental health as an excuse, mm -hmm. too. I mean, you know, and and a lot of times it's not an excuse, and 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 people have been very forthcoming about their mental health. Um, but but I don't think we can use it as an excuse when a guy's not playing, <laughs> not playing well. I mean, he's right. going through a, he's going through some stuff. He might yeah. be depressed. I don't know if he's got depression, but uh, he might be, be depressed, depressed with yeah. the way it's things totally are going right though. now. Yeah. So uh -huh. so that that's common, but. And and you're right, you know, for for athletes, if if when they're going through it, you don't want to read Twitter, you don't want to read comments, yeah. you don't want to go through that and be stuck on your phone because that could make you feel worse. You need to get away from those mm -hmm. things, but they are out there. They're going to happen. Fans in the stands are going to scream from scream at you, whether in the right or in the wrong. So it, that's part of being a professional athlete, yeah. and you just got to move on and. You know, to Zaire's credit, I, I think he's come in every game with a positive attitude. Mm -hmm. It's just, not, it's just it not going well for him. It, it happened on the court. And and I when I was thinking about this, I was um I was part of a Tiger basketball group thing on Facebook, right? Not really a part of it, just kind of observing the madness of it all, right? Mm -hmm. And people were like, hey, be careful what y'all saying here because players' parents come in here and they get angry and you guys should be more civil I'm like all right man stop like i mean like <clears throat> they don't have to be in here man like I, I and i said this on the radio at the time too when we, me and peter were doing our show people have the right to have a, a safe place to be a dumbass if they want to. <laughs> right. you know what i mean right. and like who like who am i to like say no man you can't come in here and, and get your dumb shit off like because 
this kid's mom might be here. No, man, <laughs> the kid's mom don't need to be in here. Then. This is yeah. this, this is, is our safe fifth space. Grade. Yeah. <laughs> this is our safe space to be a dumbass, man. Yeah. Like this ain't for her. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's kind of how I am about all that, man. I think that places like Twitter are fine, and saying what you're saying is, you know, if I'm not adding Zaya Williams, like yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah, well, I, I, I should be allowed to say. I think Zaire is a six foot eight. There's six foot eight of ass, like six foot eight <laughs> inches of ass. I, I should be able to say that, man. <laughs> you can say it if you want. <laughs> now, 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 I'm at the game. Hey, Zaire, you're six foot eight inches of ass. No, that's totally, yeah, that's be, a totally different thing. Yeah, well, and you'd get the little card. You'd yeah, get probably the little, get a score. Hey, warning. Luca would definitely give you about that. <laughs> Luca, Luca got you out. about that. Yeah. yeah, go get him. Yes, <laughs> yes, get him out of here. Oh. But yeah, man, it's my man Rob Fisher, man. This is what we do. Hopefully we can get you on here more often, bro. Yeah, sure, man, man, anytime. Man. I appreciate you coming in for me, man, uh, for sure. My guy, Rob Fisher, y'all know who he is, man. He's not a media member. Y'all, we, we made that clear to y'all every time he That's comes right. on. Pop Big star. time pop star here in the city. We got we to gotta recruit some new members, man. We got we need to. There's it's some more people out there. We just got to. We need to look a little harder. Because the I, game has changed some. I mean, oh, I'm as gonna pop tell you, stars, we don't have time to look. Yeah, we got time. Stars. I'm going to tell you who one is, though. Who? Jessica Benson, the goddamn pop Jessica star. Jessica Benson. When you walk up at the Jessica Timberlake concert and just fall up in that bitch. Yeah, no, that's no. true. Yeah, you. you yeah. yeah. I'll put her in there. She, well, I'll, I'll oh, allow yeah, that one. There, yeah, she's good. She's, she's in good. there, man. Yeah, pop star. Just, we got we to gotta let Jessica know she's inducting the two to Pink Collar Fraternity. All right. But she's in it. She's in it for sure. Yeah, Jessica's one of those people for sure. About to take a break, man, when we come back. Inside the same brain is here. No, it's not. The three point is here. We're at the same show. See you guys in a minute. This is one of the stranger stories that have happened during Penny Hardaway's time at Memphis, which has been marred by some pretty crazy things <laughs> going on. But this this might be at the top of the list. Let me first say I am glad to hear uh, that he's gotten over his sickness. Mm -hmm. uh, Whatever it was made him lose some daggum weight. I'll tell you that. <laughs> he looks a little, <laughs> yeah, he looks a little more in shape, brother. I can't I lie. Mean, let me get that, bro. This went from... You know, reports of the team not being so open to the idea to in a week, hey, he's on the team. I want to know who voted no and who voted yes and how many are on each side. From my experience, it just sort of feels like you had a lot of no votes, maybe a couple of yeses. But the coaches still made the decision for the for the team, ultimately. Tune in to The Anthony Sane Show, Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 p.m. weekly on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Are y'all more concerned about the 21 season stuff that you heard or the, the stuff that's going on right now that we're hearing? Probably 21 because I feel like those were just stronger personalities, if that makes sense. Like, mm. I mean, that was a real, like, this is you got a bunch of guys that are kind of all the same age, you've been playing ball to get like a long time. That was more of like a old head versus new kids on the block kind of thing. Like, you got a money coming in, he's like on the cover of Sports Illustrated. You think Landers gives two shits about that? Thinks his kids coming in all entitled. Penny hands him the keys. I'm going to be really pissed off if this team doesn't get it right because oh, I, yeah, this team, this team has everything it needs to make a deep run. These are 25 year old grown men. This isn't a 17 year old Amani Bates. Who's got his daddy sitting up underneath the, the, the goal He's screaming at Penny Hardaway from the baseline. And they're going to let this bullshit get in the way, bro. I'm going to be pissed if they don't get this right. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. All right, y'all. Welcome back to the Anthony Sane Show. Shout out to my boy Rob Fisher, man. Uh, great stuff with Rob always. Um, like I said, Rob is a huge advocate for mental health, man. So um, I'm not really sure if there are any particular organizations that he supports, but whatever Rob's got going on, I definitely support him on that. Um, great segment with Rob, of course, every time we sit down and talk. Rob's a man. Dude. Yeah, he's just a super cool, super smooth dude. My guy, um, been in the game for a long time. My man, 
Rob Fisher. But the three-pointer is here where we talk about three things going on in the world of sports. Number one, Kenny Stubberfield, you were at a uh, Penny Hardaway media availability, but Penny Hardaway basically had to let y'all know. <laughs> let y'all naysayers know, man. He let us all know. <laughs> Stay out of the family business. Now, I, I, I really thought he was going to go off on uh, Giannato's ass. Yeah, <laughs> and I was, I was geared up for that. But when I was watching it, I was like, okay, this came out hours ago. If Penny had got his ass, I would have heard about it. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, I, I watched that. And basically, Mark I don't, Mark phrased that as about as perfectly as you can. He did. He did. Without he stepping in the ass whooping territory. Yeah, you know he, what I mean? He was towing that line, Yeah. Man. And I told him that after the press conference. I was like, man, you were on that he line, He was about man. to tow his line. He yes, was he was. Stick his toe up the line of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> he would have stepped over a little bit more. You know what I mean? <laughs> the lining of his ass was about to get towed. Isn't that, though, kind of a great question when you can tow that line and not cross it? Yeah, but you can tell Penn was kind of disturbed by it. Oh, yeah, of course and he was. I wouldn't have... Well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm also the fan that that they let into the locker room. So yeah, um, I probably wouldn't have gone there. Being a penny, a true Penny Hardaway fan, yeah. I'm not gonna ask that man why is he playing his kids so much. Uh, that's definitely not some I'm gonna ask him. Yeah. But uh, Mark, hey man, hey, penny, I, we, I've said this before, man. Penny might have to see Mark <laughs> not <a> ass for real. <laughs> Mark's my guy, but uh, yeah, Penny, <laughs> <laughs> Penny, man, he might have to see that dude, man. For there sure. was there was about. He started answering the question, and mm. about 15 seconds in, it was like he, in his mind, go, wait. All right, wait up. I'm about to go off here. Yeah, let me, let me tune this back. Let me. <laughs> I ain't giving any folks though. You're not going viral off me, Mark Giannato. <laughs> yeah, you can see how Penny was like, all right. <laughs> but yeah, man, um, it was a good press conference, though. Penny talked about a lot of stuff. Uh, we of course, anytime Penny opens his mouth, there's gonna be some new nuggets that you didn't new nuggets of information that you did not know about. Which is that I think the boy Naquan Tomlin had an eye injury. Yep. Um, the kid with the the demon eyebrows. Uh, what's his name? Um, demon eyebrows. <laughs> I've never heard you describe it. <laughs> he looks like uh, oh Nick looks, Jordan. Yeah, it looks like the old DePaul uh, the DePaul Blue Demons. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. It was like the probably, blue devil. Probably like literally the nicest kid on the entire <laughs> yeah. roster. You got demon eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Jordan. I like Nick Jordan. I man. do too. Good. Yeah. He yeah. said he had like uh, the flu monia. What did Penny say he had? He said food poisoning. Uh, food poisoning. Um, something about, he was just basically breaking down why he had to play his kids. <laughs> <laughs> Jaquan got hurt in the first half. And the dog got worms. The dog got worms. <laughs> <laughs> and then, it, and here's the thing, man. Like, um, <laughs> Jaden Hardaway is having a rough season. Like, yeah. this is one of his statistically one of his worst seasons. He could play. He's like a, he just goes out there and kind of plays hard, though. Yeah, he plays defense. I seen him, he made like a game winning block in a game a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I mean, I don't really care, man. Like, I'm not, you know who he is. Who is he? His nickname is uh, Jaden Jetty. Oh my God! Hey, he's black. He's black. Junk. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like he is though. That's what it's his whole game. He he just comes out and doesn't make mistakes. Yeah. Gotta you know gets you some buckets, man. It's a win, bro. Yeah, man. Shout out, man. I, but it, I'll say this in all seriousness about Penny's team. There are a lot of media members stressing and doing this and doing that. I have no concerns about this team, man. I think yeah. they're going to be fine, man. They'll be fine. This, this, You know what this team is? This is a team that needed a week off. They needed – they have a, a midweek training camp. And whenever Penny – every season, man, every season Penny has been here, when he's had that that game, that, that, that part of the stretch of the season where he has that, that time to get the midseason training camp, that, right. one, that week off, right? they come back as a whole new team. It's yeah. happened – and the timing was perfect, man. Like Penny said, a lot of stuff that made sense. He said there was a lot of things that I was accepting. I made the mistake of accepting because we were winning. I thought that, that was the, a fire, the a best fire quote. quote. That was one of the best quotes Penny's ever made. He ever said, made. He said there were things I was accept, I was accepting and winning that I would not accept with losing, and I was and I would sit back and kind of watch those things. And now I'm dealing with those things. And he, I said, Penny, let me find out. You've been listening to the Anthony Sainz show because he on, said man. something I've been saying for weeks on here. Penny, if you're watching, God bless you, brother. I got a seat for you, man. Hey, this come on this ain't the seat, but I got a seat for you if you watch. But uh, he said something, man. He said, I got guys who came from all these different schools, all these different mentalities. And he said, I kind of figured, I thought that they would, you know, kind of figure it after a while. But some of these guys still have those mentalities they had to the schools they're in. You know what I mean? And he said, they're, they're learning how we do things here. And that's what I've been yelling forever. Like, you know, this, 
yeah, these kids are mature, but they all came in with their own egos, man. They came in uh, with a certain mindset. And he said when it, when certain when Penny Bases said when certain moments happen, like games get tight and the booty get tight. Y'all y'all used to playing for Temple, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're used to playing for St. John's. John's or whatever, you know what I mean? So yeah. yeah, it's it's it was a good 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 very transparent interview by Penny Hardaway, and I'll stamp on saying that I'm not worried about this. Nah, they'll we'll be, be fine. fine. They'll be fine for sure. Uh, speaking of boss moves, my man Jim Harbaugh. Choo. Hey, what a way to go out, man! You Come win. On, man. You win a national championship in college football with Michigan. You get a three week vacation. Were, hey, no, how you gonna tell me I can't cheat, man? How you gonna tell me? How you gonna tell me I can't cheat? How you gonna tell me I can't? Come on, you man. tell me I can't send somebody down hey, the sideline and steal your signs. Read all those little signs and shit. You little weak ass plays. How you gonna tell that man he can't cheat, man? So Jim Harbaugh wins the national championship with Michigan. Hey, turn around, man. Get get hired on your day off, man. You 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 go to uh, Los Angeles Chargers. You go get to go back to Sunday, California, man. Uh, and to be the coach of a Chargers team, kind of been uh, underwhelming, under yeah. underperforming. Uh, your boy Justin Herbert came in, highly heralded quarterback. You get Jim Harbaugh there, who's kind of a coach known for dealing with quarterbacks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, for the yeah quarterback, quarterback himself. Yep. Can't remember what was what Madden I, he used to be on. Right, no, I, yeah. Can't remember. He was kind of good. Uh, yeah, he on was one good of on that game. game. Yeah, but uh, he gets to go there. Um, I as being a quasi 49er fan. The last time I cared about the 49ers, Jim Harbaugh was the coach. I yep. do, I can't remember that. Yep. And kind of got the raw end of a deal there. Left there, uh, probably would have eventually got fired if he'd have hung on. Lost Left to, there, lost to his brother in the yeah, Super Bowl. Yeah, lost to his there. brother in the Super Bowl. I was sick about that because that was uh, that was Ray Lewis, right? That was the Super Bowl when like the the lights and shit went out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think was so. It? I think so. You might be right. I might be in the wrong decade on that. Yeah, I don't think Ray Lewis. Because that wasn't the Ray Lewis one. No. Shit, yeah, it was. It was Joe they, Flacco. Joe Flacco was the quarterback. You no, know I'm saying, but they lost to the, they beat the 49ers, right? Yeah. But I don't think Ray Lewis is still there, was he? That's the only Super Bowl they won. No, they won with um I'm talking about recently. They won the Ravens have not won three Super Bowls, bro. Ravens, Super Bowls. I'm gonna figure this out. Because I'm not a big I'm not a big NFL guy. Mm-mm. So like if we had Christian or Gabe on right. right now, they'd be able to tell. Yeah, us the what's Ravens up. haven't won three times. They won with they won with Ray Lewis, and they won. Uh, they won 2013, and they won 2001. Yeah, 2013. 2013. That's when Harbaugh was there. Yeah, yeah. So, because because yeah, Ray Lewis won it twice. Right. Shit, man. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know, man. Anyway, bro, like, yeah. Shout out to Jim stop Harbaugh, man. Me, stop asking me questions. It's, about it's, the a, it's a boss ass move, man, by Jim Harbaugh, man. Where did that? Oh yeah, he was there. Yeah. Ray Lewis. Yeah, Ray Lewis, most Lewis valuable player of the game. Yeah. Shout out, man. He was. Shit. That was post murder. Uh, Ray. Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was post killing people. You know what I mean? Hey, you hey, get, man. what a redemption story, uh, man. Alle- allegedly, <laughs> Ray Lewis. What a redemption story, man. We, we know Ray Lewis listens to the show. So hey, allegedly. there you go. Hey, what a ridiculous story, though, man. But, yeah, shout-out to Ray Lewis and shout-out to Jim Harbaugh. Number three, a lot of stuff going on in the NBA. Uh, the NBA All-Star teams uh, were announced today. The starters were announced today. I'm sorry. Let me let me get it right uh, before I get it wrong. Uh, crap, I had it pulled up on the screen, and now it's gone. Oh, I got it. Got it pulled up for you. We're going to go Eastern Conference first. Uh, Eastern Conference starters, Giannis Antetokounmpo, the captain. Something I'm excited about this year, man, is that they are not um, doing the draft. It's East West, right? It's East West, man. Yeah, man. Come on. If your conference is sorry, y'all just sorry, man. We're not mixing up nothing. Because there, there was a big, big time where a lot of guys were moving from the East to the West, so they, so they decided to switch it. I mean, mix the teams up. But I will say, one of the greatest moments in NBA basketball history was the draft when uh, Kevin Durant and uh, LeBron James were drafted, and James Harden had just left Brooklyn. Yeah. And KD was like, nah. And KD went and got Gobert instead yeah, of Harden. Yeah, I don't give a crap about this dude. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Whatever. But um, East West is better. Yeah, East West is better, man. Just go rep your. I don't want to see guys that play on the same team playing against each other, like John ja and Jaren. Right. That was weird. It was it was goofy, man. Like you want to see those dudes together. Um, Don Santacupo is the, the captain. Jason Tatum, Joel B. Tyrese Halliburton uh, is a starter. I don't think he's ever been a starter before. Damian Lillard was the starter. I think that Trey Young probably beat, made a beat him in votes, but I think other factors uh, led to uh, Dame getting in. A lot of people, you surprised by that? Yeah, I'm. If I was just to pick a guy who I think should be there, it should be Jalen Brunson. It should be uh, yeah. the point the point guard for the Knicks. 
should be his starter for the uh for the All Star team. I'm sure he's gonna make the All Star team, so I'm sure he ain't uh he ain't stressing about that. Tyrese Maxey, even I can see both of those guys. Tyrese Maxey, man. Yeah, Western Conference All Star team. Uh, it's gonna be a good game. I like this start this starting five matchup. LeBron James is the captain, followed by Kevin Durant, <clears throat> Nikola Jokic, Luka Doncic, and Shai and Shea Gilgis Alexander. Um, Steph Curry is not your Western Conference starter. It's the other guard. It's been him. That's weird. It's, it's been him, Luca, or Ja the last few years. And Shea is in the starting lineup, man. I wonder how is that though? Good on Shea, man. Because he was like third in I guess the votes. The um Yeah, yeah. The not the coaches vote, the players, right? Players, yeah. These folks hate on stuff out here, man. But yeah. Those are your uh, East and Western Conference starters. Steve Kerr is going to come out in his next post game and be like, <clears throat> "Start talking about the how terrible the All Star game is because yeah, Steph Curry it doesn't matter. In. Yeah, it don't matter." Um, also, in NBA news. Speaking of boss moves, man, Wes Unsell Jr. was like, "All right, man, I'm out." Yeah, <laughs> he was a uh, let go as coach of the Washington Wizards. He was like, "Man, y'all," he said, "I, I watched the, the Grizzlies last year, and y'all told me Tyus Jones was good." <laughs> <laughs> You think Tyus Jones is regretting uh, nah. his situation? Because uh-uh, he's going to end up somewhere. <clears throat> he's going. You're going to look up Tyus Jones going to be playing for either like the Lakers or the Spurs or like uh, what's another team? I said, damn, Tyus Jones go there. It's going to be a problem. Can I think of who it was? Can't think, man. Might be the Spurs is what I'm thinking about. But you're going to look up and Tyus Jones is going to be somewhere. Man, who is that team? I said, I don't know. But, yeah, uh, he's going to be fine. But Wes Elmsdale Jr., his father, of course, is, you know, the biggest name in that, in that, <laughs> in that franchise, franchise history. Yeah, um, yeah so, no, nah, they're they, they going to do right by him. I'm sure you probably came to them like, all right, man. They moved him up to the front office Yeah, give me, give me up out of here, man. Yeah. Give me up out of here for sure. Some, some schmo took over the job as an interim, and, yeah, we'll see where that goes. Also, uh, another interesting story, uh, news coming out of Brooklyn uh, saying that Ben Simmons – is about to start working out with their G League team, trying to get them going. I am the biggest. I'm a very like low key Ben Simmons apologist. Like I'm think, actually, this surprised me when you told me <laughs> this. This surprised me. I think he's absolutely terrible at this point of his career, but I really stand for Ben Simmons. Man, I've always been like, I'm a Penny Hardaway fan, so I've always been got you. I've always been a fan of like the big ball handlers, Pauls, <laughs> like big but, balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's Anthony would love big ball handlers. That sounds about right. What? <laughs> why this? Why this? right for me? Hey, man, pause, man. You said it. Hey, but no. Um, I don't know, man. I just got to pull for Ben Simmons. I don't know. Like, ask me, ask me what I take Ben Simmons next year on the Grizzlies. Like, if he was like on a stop it, because ain't this ain't this like the last year of his deal? Man, we got Scotty Pippen Jr. Bro, we, we don't got, need Ben Simmons. Scotty Pippen Jr. Man, <laughs> this shit is so wild. Uh, Ben Simmons still, I think, an elite level defender. Six nine, I don't really think he cares about being great anymore. I hate to say that about. I don't know, man. I don't know why I like Ben Simmons so much, man. Like I don't, I don't get into the Ben Simmons is trash conversation like other people, and I think he's trash. But I don't know. I'm pulling for. Him. I'm pulling for Ben. Well, Simmons. Everybody wants the guy to do well, but he ain't. I mean, he hasn't done anything in a few years. Yeah, he did, really didn't do anything to kind of work on his game at all. But um, imagine being Ben Simmons and not being the biggest villain out of Australia. Right now, <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know that man said, "Oh, Josh Giddy did what? Oh man, I'm gonna come back. Thank I'm you, bro. I can, I can my come back. back. My back is better. Yeah, I, feel like I can. I can go out there and play basketball again. Shout out to you, Josh Giddy. You saw that thing where the team went to a high school game. My, oh my for, god, uh, Chet Holmgren and, and Josh Giddy's like, hey, I'm gonna sit. This I mean, one do out. you honestly? Let me ask you this: You think the 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 team came to him and yeah. said no? I'm sure he had his bags packed, ready. Could, it was like, hey, could Josh. you? Sit this out, big dog. Could you imagine this out, big fella? <laughs> Josh Giddy goes to a high school. Man, imagine I, I wouldn't even let jo- Josh Giddy go make a McDonald's run. <laughs> I would yeah. let, frozen yogurt? No, not Josh Giddy. No, no, no. We got this. No basket No, no, for no, you, no, man. no smoothies. No, go to go to like a uh, long Ruth Chris or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or Mildred and right. Go to <laughs> Evelyn. Where are they at? Go to somewhere where some adult waitresses are working, man. No, <laughs> no. No Chick Fil A smoothie for you. king. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, no. tropical smoothie. No. Yeah, just order this shit on DoorDash, man. No, well, because you got to be eighteen to work for DoorDash. So. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you safe? Just do DoorDash. <laughs> I want some tropical smoothie. No, no, nope, 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 nope. nope, nope. 
No. Nah. <laughs> Please let that man go get fast food. <laughs> Is there a mall? No. 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 Ain't, ain't, no. Just, I just like to hang out at food courts. I like to do. <laughs> no, no. Get, up, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> But yeah, man, that's the three point for this week. God. Oh man, about to take a break. When we come back, man, inside the same brain is here on the Edge of the Same Show. Does the Sean Strickland Drake is too plessy thing move the needle at all? <laughs> Not at all. Not even close. No one likes either of those guys. They don't fight particularly fun. It was just kind of boring, just, and like the it, it, it just feels like it's. It's just a placeholder. Let me tell you how much of a needle mover Drake is to Plessy is not. He made Sean Strickland the the baby face in this fight, and Sean Strickland is a jackass. <laughs> there are like five minute compilations of him saying like racist remarks and like yeah. sexist, he's, he's transphobic he's remarks. He even said it in like the freaking like yeah. the, before the fight. He's making transphobic remarks. It's like, dude, why do you have? Can you just act normal for a half and, second? And Drake is Duplessis made the fans in Canada say, you know what, we like, <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> like this guy <laughs> exactly. But we're all just waiting for the rightful champion to come back, man. That's all yep. we're waiting on. Tune in to On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Basketball at times has turned into like very selfish individual statistical, like let me get mine regardless of a win or loss, especially at the collegiate level when guys are trying to make it to the next level or professionally. It's not necessarily all about coming in and winning games and championships and playing mm -hmm. together and guys being willing to sacrifice. You mm -hmm. get more guys that want to go out there and score points and make flashy plays for themselves personally than you do get teams that just want to win basketball games. Well, and I think the transfer portal has kind of accentuated that, right? Oh, a hundred percent. You come in Where, and you got 13 new guys every year. Like it's going to be difficult. To, it's almost like you got 13 mercenaries, right? That are representing, right. that are representing a, a team that the majority of the fan base would live and die for. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. All right, y'all. Welcome back to the Anthony the Same Show. Final segment of the show. <clears throat> Shout out to my man, Rob Fisher, coming in and rocking with us as as usual, man, as normal. When he uh, comes in, man, it's going to be a, a wild ride, man. Yeah, because Rob can take it anywhere, man. He can, yeah. you know, be on his bullshit. He can be straight laced, whatever you need him to do. <laughs> whatever man. you need him to be. And when we get together, we, send, we tend to typically have a good time. My man, Rob Fisher, was in the building. Inside the same brain, we were talking about something that's uh, on my mind, man. Some of have been trying to figure out out here, man. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times they've been based on some Facebook post, you know? So <laughs> I see a post and it was like, uh, all y'all people who say you rather be cold and hot, you know, you know, how y'all feel? Like go out there and go and stand outside for a little bit. And it was, you know, of course we had single digit temperatures here in the city of Memphis. Um, and, you know, now it's like 60 something, like I said, which is nuts. And I'll throw this out there to you, Kenny. Um, if, if it comes down to extreme heat or extreme cold, which one? Are you more of a fan of which one are you more toggled for? Okay, you said the word extreme. What does extreme mean to you? Like in the like anything colder than like in the twenties. Like okay, cold enough for stuff to to freeze. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or take, like a hundred something outside. I'll take extreme cold every day. Man, I think we are brothers for that particular reason, man. I cannot, I cannot stand to be hot at oh, all, bro. man. And I'll and I'll tell you, this is probably because I enjoy having a very low utility bill as well. But I'm not particularly stingy with it because this is my comfort level. Like, this is how I like to feel. I like to be kind of cold at night. Like I don't, I don't like being, I don't like being in a hot house. I've been in people's houses who are hot. Yeah. Be like, all right, man, I'm gonna at you, bro. Like you know, I'm a, like I'm, I'm, I'm at a slide though. You know what I mean? But I can't. I don't like to be hot, man. I don't like. Yep. And then like, <clears throat> like the um, heater heat like kind of makes my head hurt a little bit. Like drives me all out. Like I can't. 
No, nah, man, I can't. Um, I, I I can't stand being hot at all. In my in my apartment, my thermostat rarely goes past sixty eight degrees, right. like in the wintertime. Yep. Like I, it might hit seventy. Like, and if it is, it's just gonna be for a little bit. Like if I take a shower, I'll cut up to seventy, and then I'll seventy one maybe. Then I'll cut it back down once I once my body temperature regulates again. But like, I can't stand being um. I can't stand being hot, man. And it's like, here's here's my whole method to the whole thing. You tell me where you sit with this. Like, if it's cold outside, like if it's extremely cold, like I can bundle up and just, you know, put my layers on and I'm warm and I can kind of, like even when it was like super cold like this past week. Yeah. I was, my hands only got cold one time screwing around with Gabe because yeah. Gabe was like about to slip on the ice. So I had to kind of deal with him. So my hands got cold screwing around with him. But, like, it was tolerable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man, but, but you could always layer up. If it's stupid hot outside, you can get butt-ass naked, bro. You still can be hot as shit. Hot. Like, it ain't nothing you can do about it. Like, yeah. And, like, um, man, I'm, I'm, now, as far as, like, snowing and ice and all that, I can't deal with that either. But I can deal with it being cold way more than I can deal with it being hot, man. Like, I cannot go to sleep if, it's, if I'm hot, period. So where are you at on that? I'm in the exact same boat. Like I, you know, the snow and the ice is it is what it is. It's a kind of a byproduct of it mm. being cold. But um, if it was like dry and cold, mm-hmm. that'd be good. Like right. I would, I could live, I could live in mm-hmm. that all year round. Right. The, I mean, I've been in Memphis my entire life, and I still can't handle. I, I, I don't like the summers. Like I still am <clears> not used to the summer heat. Like it's yeah. just, it's just too much to see humidity. Right. I think that gets me. Right. But yeah, for me, it's. Our house is the same way. Keep it about right. 68, 69 degrees. Yeah. Um, in the wintertime. I have a I have a little, uh, you know, cold air unit in my room that I keep on all year round. So I <laughs> love to sleep cold. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, man. Man, you give me a good weighted blanket and it's kind of crispy cold. Yeah, man. We're man, good. Bury myself in that joint. It's all yeah, good. We're good, man. man. But, and I'll say this too, man. Like, uh, as far as the temperature is concerned, like, even if you dial it back a little bit, like if you make it, um, let's say you make it 30 degrees or no, if you make it like 35 degrees outside yeah. and you take it down to like 80 degrees outside on the hot side, right? Mm-hmm. If my air condition goes out, I ain't sleeping through that no AC night. But that cold night and I ain't got no heat on, I can get through that. Oh, yeah, we can get through it. I can it. get through it. Yeah, absolutely. But that hot night, I don't know. I'm driving somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going, hey, go you got air? The, yeah, go stay somewhere. Yeah, man, I got, I got, I can't do it at all, man. But, uh, Teach his own, I guess. Man. I'm right there with you, man. I'm I'm not a my whole my whole entire family. Let me ask you this. Let's go this direction. Mm-hmm. All right. Extreme cold, extreme heat. Mm-hmm. Vacation. Do you go to a beach or do you go to the mountains? I've never done well, just to remind you, Ken, I am black. Okay. Uh, so I've never been to the mountains, hiking. What? Uh, s- uh snowing. Uh have you ever been camping before? You no, like camping? No. Man, I have horrible allergies, uh-huh. eczema. You think I'm gonna go camping, bro? You ever, <laughs> we had this whole, so we were at the Memphis game and uh, we had all the white media. I bet Terry Davis has been capable talking to all the black media uh-huh. and it was literally split down the middle. The you black, never did that shit. They said, I asked him about camping. Every white dude. Oh, I love camping, man. I'll go camping all the time. Every black dude. Nah, bro. Nah, it sound like, uh, <laughs> I sound like roots. <laughs> sound like you go out there and won't come back. No. Nah. I'm not a beach like like we our our yearly vacation for our family is a mm. beach trip during the middle of the summer, and I I just tolerate it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand being hot, man. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Like for real. And yeah, and it was a guy. He said a friend of mine, Andre Parsons, uh, just a really smart guy on Facebook. He's a spoken word artist. Uh, I think he's written a book. Uh, he does like he's a trainer. Does like some workout stuff, circuit training type stuff or whatever. Uh, he said, man. He, he, he'll he write, like, this long list of stuff that he's just being transparent about, right? And it's stuff that makes you think. He was like, man, one of his bullet points one time is, like, I understand everybody likes to go on vacations and go out of town and all that. He was like, I'm kind of good on it. And he's like, and I was like, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying I don't like to travel, but it can, that kind of stuff can be kind of, sometimes what you call vacationing is, like, supposed to be stress relief. It can be way more stressful than, like, what is, is than not, traveling sometimes well, you know I mean? especially both of us are fathers mm-hmm. it's not a vacation when you go on vacation with, with your kids, kids man yeah, it ain't at all <laughs> it, it, it's not at all 
but yeah, man, it's uh it's it's really interesting stuff for sure, man, to think about. Um I, I'm good. Though. I want to be cold, man. I want to be cold. Yep. Unless it's snow and ice, then I'm I can't wait till it warms up. I was about to lose my mind doing with all this snow out everywhere, man. Oh man. I was good. Sure. I loved it. I yeah. loved it. I can handle it. And Gabe, I tell you, Gabe said he didn't play in this stuff at all. My kids didn't either. Man, bro. My son, I I asked my eleven, my nine year old son, so you want to go out and play in the snow? He's like, nah. I'm good. He go he said, he said, I'll get red if I go outside. <laughs> I'm like, yes, yeah, you're a you're a white kid that would get your skin would get red in the snow. Yes, that's true. My kids didn't even touch the snow. Yeah, man. And I was sick all week, so I didn't get out in the snow either. But yeah, it didn't even touch it. Man, it's crazy stuff. But yeah, man, it's been another one, another in the books, man. Have, have we caught up with on the bluff yet? Have we had more episodes than them yet? You you were tied. There it is. So the tie, I, I passed them next week, right? Next week. There it is. No, we're tied now. They'll do one, and I'll do two. Yeah, that's right. I will pass on the bluff <laughs> with Gabe Coon and Christian Fowler. I will be the most the most episodes on Bluff City Media will belong to Anthony saying you bums will never pass me. <laughs> Greer's gonna pass me though. Does he count episodes? I don't think so. Because Greer's up there like three times a week. Go to eventually pass me. No, he won't, because in the offseason, he's gonna like slow down, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, that's right. Greer, you know Greer, man. He takes the whole summer off, man. man oh, yeah. <laughs> Greer, man. That's some real some real stuff out there, man. But, shout, <laughs> but catch catch my boy Daniel Greer, man. For the boat, for the best. Grizz's post-game experience out there. The show he does with Nate Quarles, very good stuff. They have occasional guests as well. They had I was you on there, on I was last, on there night. last night. We had a good time. Yep. Uh, check it out, man. The best Grizz's post-game experience. They run kind of long, run at least an hour. Yep. Um, you know, you got the, the, the Grizz's radio show. Um, the, they do their thing for a little bit. Uh, that's, you know, of course, that's on the radio. You can hear that every post-game. But uh, you get to see people in front of you talking. They have guests on, and they talk about what's coming up next. Yep. Really good experience uh, <clears throat> for you guys to check out. And let me plug another show real quick. Mm -hmm, go ahead. We started a Tigers live show. Oh, yeah. If you if you didn't know, now you know, man. We started a Tigers live show, live post-game show after every Tigers game. We're mm -hmm. gonna And we're going to continue it through the football season, through all that kind of stuff. Oh, he's going to do football, too? Yeah, man. We're going to do was it. A, my boy Francis Carlotta, right? Yeah, man. The man's killing it over man, there. Man, I looked up, man. I had to. I was Jesse Jackson meme crying when yeah, I saw a non-white boy. Yeah, you, <laughs> you loved it. You loved it. That's all, man. Hey, man. Oh, man, a minority. <laughs> a brother of color. My boy, Francis Carlotta. Out there doing his thing, man, for sure. Uh, <laughs> Check it out after every game, man. After goes, every game. Yeah, after every game. Goes for about Jump in there. 45 minutes man, to an hour. We have a good, good time, stuff, man. man. He's a pretty knowledgeable well, Can dude, we get man. you on that show sometime? Man, I don't know. Can we get you on that show? No, nope, because I... Hey, me and me and Nate Quarles in the same boat, man. I don't have time for Tiger, Bat Tiger sports fans. I feel you, brother. Man, it's, it's just it's just like it's just like it's like it's a lot of just super emotional conversation happening about a team that's a top twenty five team, and they're probably a top ten talent. Like I can't think of many teams in the country, bro. Like we've got mm -hmm. your big man rotation from Memphis is the best in the country right is, now. <laughs> hey, is let me Malcolm tell you, Dandridge, yeah, Jordan Brown, and. Naquan Walton and Nick Jordan, uh, the Demon De the Demon Deacon, <laughs> Demon kid. Deacon himself, Demon Eyebrows himself, <laughs> the Blue Devil. Hey, let me tell you something, man. Yeah. People are gonna be, you know, people are tuned in. If you're still tuned into the show, you know, after this amount of time, thank you. Mm -hmm. But uh, I got some reports today about Jordan Brown. Was it? Um, you know, Jordan Brown was kind of a little bit of a disappointment during the first, mm -hmm. you know. A couple of games that he played. See what happened when you when you stayed the entire episode of Anthony Sane show. You get that news, son. I was uh I heard some some rumors today. What you heard, bro? That the staff believes that the Jordan Brown that is now on the team mm -hmm. is the guy they thought they were getting in the in the offseason. Hey, let's go there. Hey, Y'all better is, stop messing with Penny, bro. That Penny he is, know what he's doing. That he is dominating. Penny know what he's doing, bro. They don't want to see Jordan Brown out there. You think some bum on UAB want to see Jordan Brown? Nope. And that's including and that and that's adding to <clears throat> the best season Malcolm Dangerous has ever yeah. had as a Tiger. Cause this is Jordan Brown. This ain't Michael B. Jordan Brown. This ain't Michael B. Jordan Brown. This is Jordan Brown, <laughs> former Lou Henson Award winner. Yeah, former big Lou Henson Award winner. I'm telling you, if big call at the town's looking, let's go. <laughs> big Don Trip <Tripp> looking. <laughs> big Don Trip <Tripp> looking. <laughs> Big belly. <laughs> Not anymore. 
big overweight. That man went to big pimp. Is it wrong? Let me ask you this. Uh, we need to get out of here, but let me ask you this. Is it wrong for me to make a joke about him going to fat camp during that six weeks off? Hey, he did what he had to do, man. I mean, is it hey, like, what did we find like, out? What did we like find out? He was. What did we find out? He was trying to get a trade to another school. <laughs> he was just wearing a fat suit. Like James Harden. <laughs> like James Harden. In my in my body, is that a body shaming situation? Hey, Am I gonna get canceled for that? Or I don't know, man. We talk about we talk about uh Zion Williamson all the time. So that's true. Uh, that's true. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, man. No, nah, but man, if he can come back and play even, you know, if he could add anything <laughs> more to yeah. this team, it's gonna be it's gonna be a plus. crazy, man. It's gonna be a plus for sure, man. I'll tell you what, man, we will see you guys next week. Me and Paris Sharkey will be here for sure. Not really sure who my guest is uh, will be for uh, next Friday's show, but I'll figure something out between now and then, man. For Kenny Stubfield behind the glass, my man Rob Fisher, appreciate you coming out again, Rob, as always. And we'll see y'all next time, man, and we out. Thank you for listening to The Anthony Sane Show. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Also, like and subscribe to Bluff City Media's YouTube page. For comprehensive coverage of Memphis sports, head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co and find out how you can become an insider. We will see you back here next week.